Throughout life, we live through a series of firsts. The first girlfriend, the first dance, the first graduation, etc. Hunting is no different. From the first time you pick up a gun or the first bow, to the first time going out to the range and actually shooting it and hitting a target. Then there's the first animal. Whether it be the first rabbit, first turkey, first deer, whatever it is, it will always be the first. The journey you're about to take with us is our first big hunt together. From the first conceptual idea to actually sitting down and putting pen to paper and planning things out, mapping out the trip, saving for the deposit, then calling Canada and actually putting the deposit down, to then the fun part of getting online and ordering all that equipment and anxiously waiting for it to show up, breaking it out of the boxes and tailoring it just for us. Please join us on our Canada bear hunt. Our first. Now, no respectable travel or hunting videos without a good solid travel montage, so here we go! The first part of the journey, we actually traveled north to our friends at Two Hats Ranch. We stayed there for a couple days just to hang out with them because we hadn't seen them in a while. It just happened to be fawn catch season. The ranch tries to locate and count most of the new fawns they have on the property, so they kind of know the numbers that they need to work with that year. It's a fun way to spend the day out trying to catch and tag these fawns. Let's just say that Emily's technique, well, it needs improved on. We also had a chance to get a couple good workouts in and then hang out with a friend that I hadn't seen since Iraq in 2004. After two days hanging out with our friends at Two Hats Ranch, we had to push north another 12 or 13 hours. The place we were going to is called Northern Outfitters and it actually sits just outside the city of Val d'Or in Quebec, Canada. Q Travel Montage. All right, so pause real quick. Uh, just wanted to give you guys some education if you're thinking about driving across the Canadian border. Besides maybe Mexico, this was probably the easiest border crossing I've ever done. They do ask you a couple questions. First, um, they ask you what your tag number is. They ask you where you're going. They ask you the purpose of your trip. They ask you how much liquor you're bringing in. And you are allowed, I'm looking at it right now, you are allowed to bring in a liter and a half of wine or one point one four liters of liquor so 40 ounces of liquor or 24 cans or bottles of beer you can have up to one carton or 200 cigarettes up to 50 cigars and 200 grams of loose tobacco so if you're a dipper you might want to weigh that out you know new zealand was the same way they were really really strict on loose tobacco when we went we had a special operations guy almost not get in the country because he had too much copenhagen with him don't worry about the suppressed rifles and stuff. Copenhagen, you're gone. Uh, you can bring a reasonable amount of perfume. I don't know why you'd want that. No restrictions on cameras currently um, or film, really. And you can bring duty-free gifts as long as they don't exceed $60. We didn't have any problems. They asked us if we had firearms. We were bow hunting, so obviously no firearms. Uh, firearms rack in Canada is actually a really big deal. Pistols are an absolute no-go, off-limits, don't even take the exit, don't even think about it. 
firearms as far as rifles and shotguns you can bring as long as you have the correct permits filled out. Um, and I'll put a link to those in the description box. But just wanted to kind of give you a rundown of what it's like to go through the Canadian border if you're driving and we have the video of it. So let's go back to the video. Hello, how are you? Good, yourself? Good. Where do you live? Stillwater, Oklahoma. What's the plate number on your vehicle? Tupadu, Tupadu. Door, that's how you pronounce it. And purpose for a visit? Bear hunting. Bring any firearms in? Nope. Just bow hunting? Just bow. How long are you coming in for? Uh, the hunt is the 2nd through the 9th, so. And are you bringing any beer, wine, liquor, tobacco? A bottle of liquor. Just one? Yep, just one. Any, uh, any pepper spray or mace on board? Nope. Do you have any goods? Are you leaving in Canada or any gifts for you? No. Have a safe day. Thanks, sir. Well, after being on the road for over 24 hours over the course of three days, we were flat out exhausted. We got to the camp just a little bit early, so we couldn't quite check into our cabin yet, so we got some breakfast and just took a tour of the place. This place is off the charts beautiful, and definitely worth checking out if you're interested in bear hunting up here in Quebec. Now here up at Northern Outfitters, they do hunt over bait. It is legal up here. The bait sites were about an hour to an hour and a half away from the camp, so it was quite a little drive. The guides basically drop you off. They walk you in, show you the tree you need to get up in. The stands are already there. They freshen up the bait for you, and it's just sit and wait. After sitting in the stand for about three or four hours, I finally started to see some bears. Now these are the first bears I've ever seen in the wild. I was so crazy jacked that night. In some of the videos, it looks like the tree's shaking a little bit. You know, it is, because I am. After about six hours, I had seen about 12 bears. That last one that just came in, well, it was just a little bit too pretty and I couldn't resist.
So now we're just waiting on my guy to get here so we can uh, go track my bear. Yeah. That way, that way, back up that way. I thought I heard him crash up there somewhere. So I got a rule here. You can't go recover your own bear. I don't want you tracking your own bear. So I got to wait. Uh, walked out to the road, put a ribbon on the road so he knows that I've shot a bear and just waiting on him to get here now. So pretty cool. It's the first day. I've got six more days of fishing now, I guess, because I've already shot a bear. It's okay though. Uh, his coat looked really, really, really good. I think he's pretty big. It's my first bear, so I don't know. Oh well, it's getting pretty dark and my guide's not here yet. And he was coming by once an hour until one of us either shot a bear or we ran out of light. He hasn't been by in a couple hours. I'm thinking Emily may have shot a bear too because they may be out tracking a bear. So we may have both shot a bear in our first night. Who knows? I don't care. I don't care. It's beautiful out here though. Uh, middle Canada? Center of Canada? Quebec area? Anyway. So, uh, yeah, we might be busy tonight tracking bears. So, it's got good blood on my arrow and checked it. So uh, that's good. So we finally got the bear out last night, ended up being a sow, uh, but it was a fairly big sow, so about 140 pound sow. Uh, they think she's about 12 years old-ish, so not bad. I thought it was a boar, uh, I thought it was bigger than it was. Uh, so learning lessons, but she's still really, really, really good sow, really, really, really good coat. Uh, we tried the new Rage Tripans, they did really good. Um, she only ran probably 30-ish yards. Just kind of changed direction a couple times though. Had a really good blood trail and um, yeah, so it ended up really good. Uh, we had two more bears killed last night, both uh, really good boars, so. Uh, but now I have six days of fishing because I've already used my bear tag and so Emily's up next. Um, so she, hopefully she'll get it done in the next day or two. And uh, yeah, so we're really excited. So as you can see, I definitely, definitely shot a bear on the first night. Uh, very cool though because now I was given the opportunity to go sit with Emily and film her. What we didn't know is that the weather was going to turn really bad on day two of our hunt. The weather went from 60 to 70 degrees and just beautiful to 30 and 40 degrees of wind and rain. Just horrible hunting conditions. Emily hunted every single day, twice a day, for almost the entire time and it came down to the very last day that we were going to be able to hunt in the national forest. Now, if you remember in the beginning of the video, we brought our bows. As you can see here, she's got a rifle. The reason is, it was raining so hard in the stands that we had left to hunt, the bait was so far away from the ground blind or the tree stand that a bow shot was just not going to be doable. Really glad that the guide had a 30-30 for her to use because Emily completely smoked one of the largest black bears of the spring season in Quebec in 2018. Emily had two bears come in that night. The first were just a little bit too far and we never really got a good look at him. That's probably for the best because the second one that came in was a freaking Volkswagen. He came in, kind of knew something was up. Finally, at the very last minute, he just wouldn't square off. He would not get broadside. I almost got the worst husband of the year award here because Emily turned to me and says, hey, I'm getting ready to shoot. And I looked at her and I said, what? And she shot. Well, during that process, I put the phone down for two seconds and that's when she made her shot. An absolutely incredible shot. Bear was facing her, she got him right in the chest. He fell down immediately, but then got up and wandered off. Looks good. I don't know. He looks really good. I don't care. 
It's the second pair I've seen in four days. Okay, I just shot my first bear ever. I think it's a pretty decent one, I don't know. We've been in Quebec, Canada, near Val d'Or for the last four days, and I haven't seen anything until today. I've hunted in a ladder stand, I've hunted in a double ladder stand, I've hunted in just a hang-on stand, and I told him I did not want to be in a ground blind because, you know, death. And I'm hunting in a ground blind, so. <laughs> The other stands weren't working. I actually brought my crossbow to use it and the first two days was crap. Yesterday it rained, we froze our butts off and they didn't want me to use a crossbow because they were afraid that tracking it was gonna be difficult. And so I used a rifle yesterday and then today it was supposed to be about a 50 or farther longer shot and I'm not comfortable shooting my crossbow at 50 yards. So I used a rifle again, good lever action 30-30, which is a, a good round apparently for bear. So we haven't seen it yet, but I'm pretty sure it's down. I don't think it went very far. So we're gonna go put out my flag and wait for the guy to come pick us up. What are you doing? I'm putting out my ribbon to tell the guide when he drives by that I killed a bear. And he come helping to find it. Yay. Well, there's no hiding that happiness right there. It's written all over her face. Now we just had to find the oh, bear. So we got a ribbon up on the tree and just waited for the guide to show up. And let me tell you, when he showed up, I right think there. he was more excited than both of us. Yeah. Uh, just be aware, there's a little language warning here. It looks like it's painted on. Hey, there's some there's, there's some this, over here this way yeah i see some on the leaves this way he's spraying all over this way yeah yeah oh all right let's drop, drop right. oh there's a ton of blood right underneath you ryan okay. underneath you right, to the here, left here. Here. oh this is gonna be a pain you couldn't have shot him up though <laughs> Yeah, he did. Good lord. There's a bunch right here to your right. Holy crap. Well, this is kind of easy to follow. He's over here now. Oh yeah, there's a big pile right there. Congrats! <laughs> Thank you! Good God! I hope you're ready to, to work. Yes. I've waited four days Nailed. to work. And, and a neck. neck. Yep. <laughs> I blew his throat out. Holy f <laughs> Right boy. down the hill, tabernacle. Yeah. You have your tag? Yes. First tag? I don't know which it is. This one. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Typical pain in the ass. <laughs> shot him in the neck, huh? Wow. Yeah, he wouldn't give her a broadside shot. He wouldn't come in and he oh, was behind job. He was behind some brush. Uh-huh. And I was like, man, I don't know. I actually waited for a little bit. And I was like, you think you, you would take this shot? And he was like, I don't know, I can't tell. I was waiting just as he picked his head up and I was like, my luck is he dropped his head right as I shot and I blew his bottom jaw off. Mm. I can't believe he went this far for as much as he can. I can't. Yeah. I'll play back the video and show you. I mean, he goes down. He, we thought he was down right there. Okay. Two, three. Oh. 
Not that much, but... Get in my way, tree. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Next oh. time shoot and shoot again. Okay. Look at this bottom tooth. <sighs> it's a real trophy. Real trophy. So the hunting trip's done, got that out of the way, got to kill one of the biggest bears that they had in camp all year. And now Ryan and I have a few days left to do kind of whatever we want. So we decided that we were going to hire a fishing guide, go out to the secret spots in the lake that we couldn't reach in our little boats that we had been in. And if you know anything about us, nothing ever goes to plan and the boat caught on fire about 15 miles from where we were and stranded us. So we didn't film a ton, but here's what we got of that. <laughs> it's a really nice one. Oh. oh, what you're seeing here is post fire. We just put the fire out and the paddling has begun. There's a storm front moving in, we can see that. We're 15 miles from base camp. We're just trying to get to the closest cabin possible to see if we can get some help. What are you doing, Emily? Rowing a boat with a net. Why are you doing that? Uh, because something happened in the boat and it doesn't work now and we're stranded in the middle of the lake. I mean, there's, worse, there's worse places to be stranded in the middle of the lake. Well, Can't. I'm not. <laughs> the, the woods can eat us. Call it luck, divine intervention, whatever you want to call it. Our bear hunting guide's cabin was about a mile away. He has his own little private cabin out on this giant lake. Our fishing guide knew it was that, so that's the cabin we're going to here. Well, we made it to okay. gonna, uh, our camp. Just get the life jacket on. Yep. Put the life jacket on. Leave your stuff here. We're gonna come back tonight. So we broke into this cabin, and uh, we didn't break in. Uh, we actually found the key, and they have a little motor in there, a little like eight horse outboard that we have put on this boat. So we've got like 15 miles of lake. We're, for, this is real, there's no radio, no phone. Uh, we got a little bit of water and we are seriously stranded in the lake. We broke into a cabin to get motor. So let's see what happens next. Okay, I said break into the cabin. We didn't break into the cabin. Uh, this is our bear hunting guide's place. Our fishing guide knew where it was at. Although our bear hunting guide did not know we were there. It just stroke of luck that we happened to come upon it and we found where his key was to his shed and we found the outboard motor. What do you think?
our escape raft. Bon, le vent en dedans, tu te dis que j'ai emprunté la chaloupe à Dan, puis que je t'en route. Ne pas s'inquiéter. Merci. What, what was just what what just happened? I, I say uh, just just talk told, told them oh. we are in road and okay. uh, but So after making it back from our near death experience being stranded in the lake we found out that the radio wasn't on back at camp so that's why we couldn't call for help with the radio that was in the boat so that was pretty fantastic. Regardless, we had a good time, we survived, and the next day we started packing up everything. We got our bear, realized that we didn't bring enough coolers, ended up having to put my bear hide in a trash bag with ice around it, double bagged it, and we started our trip home. I don't remember how long it was, it was definitely over 24 hours. And we decided to go back a different way and go through Niagara Falls because I had never seen it before. So, cue Niagara Falls. That was our big trip together, our first big trip together out of the country. We enjoyed it so much. We're actually gonna go back this June and we're gonna bring some friends with us. And we can't wait to show you that. And we've got a lot more great content coming to you. And this is The Way We Hunt. Can you go away please? I did. <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. You're listening and you're back door filming. Video's over. This day keeps getting better and better. Now it's raining hard in, a, in our escape raft. We've been all over the U.S. in a few countries hunting and fishing. And now we want to take you on those adventures with us. And if you stick around, we're going to try to share some tips and tricks with you. So hopefully you can do the same thing. So check us out.